Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Louise Irvin. I'm here to represent Ardmore Ceramic Art in South Africa. And it's going to be my pleasure to tell you the story today of the wonderful artists who live in KwaZulu Natal, the old Zululand, and all the amazing work that they are doing in ceramic. It's also a marvelous story in that the whole community in that region of South Africa has been uplifted by their work in ceramics. So I'm going to share with you that story today, and I would be delighted if afterwards you would come and look at our exhibition of Ardmore Ceramics, which is at 409. My role is as a museum curator. I look after the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts in South Florida, and we're very privileged to have an extensive collection of ceramic art. It's a wonderful feel-good story because of all the great work that's being done in the community. It's a remote part of KwaZulu Natal, which is the old Zulu land, not very far from Durban, inland from Durban, and about five hours from Johannesburg. And it's the most beautiful part of the South African countryside um, in the foothills of the Drakensberg Mountains. So in that remote community, a new industry has been born, uh, the creation of art uh, using clay as their medium. So they have the most beautiful surroundings, but it was an area that was struck by poverty and unemployment until Ardmore uh, became the great opportunity for the artists. This is the lady who started it all. Her name is Faye Halstead. And she has come from Zimbabwe, and she trained as a ceramicist in South Africa. And she moved to a remote farm in the foothills of South African mountains called Ardmore, which is Scottish for high place. And there she wanted to continue her interest in making ceramic art. So she began to work with the daughter of her housekeeper, and this is just over 30 years ago now. And from those humble beginnings, they have created a wonderful new enterprise with studio space uh, where artists can come and work. They're given materials, they're given a guaranteed market for their work, and together they're all creating about 50 or 60 of them at any one time, these amazingly unique pieces of ceramic art. This is their gallery in Ardmore in the Caversham district of South Africa. So what the start of the museum was, was a tribute to the very first artist to work for Faye, which is a lady called Bonnie Nichalen Shalley. And Bonnie was the daughter of Faye's housekeeper. And because she'd had polio, she was unable to work in the fields. So Faye thought that teaching her how to work with clay could be a good opportunity for her. And so they started to work together, exploring the medium of clay and doing the most extraordinary artworks. Bonnie proved to be a very talented student the Bible provided her with a lot of her inspiration. She was a very religious young woman. And together they created sculptural ceramic art, which in 1990 won the Standard Bank Award in South Africa for young artists. It's a very prestigious award. And it was the first time that artists working together in collaboration had won this award. And so this was an acknowledgement in 1990 for the studio's success. And they moved from there to creating a studio comprised of Bonnie's friends and family members who came along also to ask Faye if they too could come and learn about ceramic art. This ewer that you see here at the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts in South Florida is being shown by Faye, who's standing on the right there, and it commemorates 30 years of successes at Ardmore. It also tells some of the painful stories of Ardmore because one of the greatest issues 
that the artists have had to survive was the pandemic of HIV AIDS, which took the lives of many of the first Ardmore artists, including Bonnie. Another great talent to be lost in this way was Wonder Boy, who you see here on the screen. And his work started to collect huge sums of money at auction in England and South Africa, before sadly he was also taken by the disease. So Faye found that she was battling on two fronts, both to work with the poverty in this rural area and also with AIDS. Uh, but she helped to find the medication and to work with them to battle the disease and also to face up to the problems um, of the disease, which was a taboo topic that really nobody wanted to talk about. But gradually, they began to share their experiences and to communicate through their art. And this lady that you see on the screen now, her name is Punch, Punch Shabalala. And Punch was stricken by the disease. And on this urn, you see her being carried home on a stretcher, supposedly to die. But she recovered thanks to the medication. So on, and she has gone on to become one of the leading artists at Ardmore. And you can see this magnificent piece on the right um, on display in the Pasco Gallery booth um, in 409. So it's a wonderful success story um, in the battling of that terrible disease and how these artists have made such great recoveries and are now able to concentrate on their ceramic art. Punch is one of the leading artists. She's trained and mentored many young artists to follow in her footsteps. And these are just some of the types of pieces that she has been creating in the decorative style. They create functional pieces like platters and trays, but also teapots and vases, and they're all meticulously hand-painted um, by very talented artists who have learned the techniques of painting. They work in collaboration. Um, there are usually two, sometimes three artists involved in each piece. There'll be one to throw the piece on the potter's wheel if it's a hollowware vessel and another to sculpt the animal motifs, and then another to paint the final design. And then they'll have the kiln men and the glazers to create the finished piece. Kaniso, who you see on the left, works very closely with Punch there on creating the ceramic art. So these partnerships have developed. Um, their motto is, we are because of others. They work in the spirit of Ubuntu, um, which means that you cannot do anything on your own. You rely on the success of others um, for your success. This is a very topical little piece um, with April the giraffe having recently been watched by millions giving birth at a zoo in New York. Um, giraffe pieces have become all the rage and you can see quite a number um, on display in the Pasco Gallery booth. Magnificent tray here. But all the big five African animals are portrayed by the Ardmore artists, uh, not just the giraffes. And as well as incorporating them into uh, sculpture details on vases and platters, they've also created independent freestanding sculptures of the animals, sometimes written um, by Africans who are going on safari on board the animals. The modeling studio is comprised mainly of men who have been brought up as youngsters to work with clay on the riverbank, some of them, and they make their own toys from the mud on the bank. So often they have a natural inclination to work with the clay, and so these talents are being brought out of them. Faye is a regular visitor to the clay studio working with them, mentoring them, inspiring them. But the actual creation of each piece comes from within the artists themselves. And every piece is a unique work of art. They, they never use molds in the process. They're working with individual pieces of clay 
to create their forms, which are then fired and then painted and then glazed to complete the finished piece. Some of the animals that they choose to reflect are the endangered species of South Africa, such as the rhino, who's still being ruthlessly hunted um, for their horns. And so a lot of their work draws attention to the problems of they have of poaching, both of rhino tusks and elephant tusks, and the slaughter that sadly still goes on today um, with these animals for the ivory. So they can draw attention through their art to these problems. But what also comes across is the wit, the whimsy, and the humor of the artists. And here you can see um, some travelers. Um, this concept first developed in 2010 when South Africa hosted the World Cup for soccer. And so the idea of people traveling around Africa and to and from Africa inspired these very different travelers who ride on the backs of exotic animals. But just to prove that people have ridden on a rhino, these three children at the top it was back in the 50s when the rhino was rescued from Operation Noah, uh, when the lake in Zimbabwe was uh, flooded and the animals were all rescued. So this little rhino was kept and brought up by the local vet and his family. There's only one female sculptor in the studio. Her name is Betty, and there she is uh, working with Faye in this picture. So it tends to be that the men do the sculptural work and the women do the painted work, although that's just how it's developed rather than it has to be that way. This is Lovemore, and Lovemore does most of the throwing of the pottery on the wheels. So when we see the teapots or the vase forms, it's often the work of Lovemore who has created the original forms. You can see them here drying out in the sunshine. They're allowed to dry naturally in the sun before they're then fired in the kiln. So you can see some of the work being inspected there by Ed Pasco, who has the Pasco Gallery representing Ardmore here today. And he goes out to South Africa three times a year uh, to commission new designs and to bring them over to share with the American audiences. They go into the kilns, um, after which they're then painted and glazed. And you can see um, the other area that they've been exploring in recent times, which is the Zulu cultural figures, which tells the story of the lifestyle of the Zulu people. And they you can see their um, going about their daily pursuits of cooking and wood carving and throwing pottery. And you get a wonderful feel here for the traditional dress of the Zulu people in the beautifully painted hats and headdresses that they wear in these outfits. This is a royal family Zulu style. We know this from the leopard skin robes that the king is wearing. Only the most often honored chiefs would be allowed to wear leopard skin, who's considered the, the king of the beasts. So this wonderful little storytelling piece is exploring the traditions of Zulu culture. The studio of painters is predominantly women, um, starting from Bonnie back all those years ago and moved into Bonnie's friends and family members. And now that we've moved on 30 years, we're now seeing a new gener generation coming into the studio, the daughters and nieces and nephews of the existing artists. So they're all mentored by the senior artists and then taught um, how to do all the different skills that are involved in creating the ceramic art. So these are by Nosifo, who's the daughter of Jabu Neni, um, one of the other most talented painters in the studio today. So it is wonderful how the studio is, is going on from strength to strength, and it has become multi-generational. And one of the things that they're doing now is raising money to support the Ardmore Winter School, which is held 
um, by the artists to train young talent and people who want to come into the world of ceramics and see whether they have potential in that medium. So this is just a view of the Ardmore Winter School, which currently goes on out of doors, um, and they're hoping soon to raise the money to build an indoor studio so that they can train them on all the fine brushwork that's needed to decorate the Ardmore ceramics. You can see their equipment is quite rudimentary. They're using ice cube trays in order to be their painter's palette but it doesn't hold them back in terms of the wonderful intricate work that they can do, working with very, very fine brushes to create the finished design. This bowl you'll see on display, um, a storytelling bowl where you can see the animals interacting in the wild. And one of the aspects of the Ardmore art that's most admired is when the painted decoration moves and makes a transition into the sculptural motifs uh, to form the borders or the handles or the finials of a particular piece. Some years ago, Ardmore was discovered by Christie's Auction House in London. They've described them as modern day collectibles. And there are many other illustrious people who enjoy Ardmore and have become uh, keen collectors. Oprah Winfrey is a regular visitor to South Africa where she supports uh, schools for young women. Helen Mirren, the actress there. There's a piece in the White House because it's often given as state gifts by South African statesmen. And the bottom left shows the Queen Queen Elizabeth II of England in her castle in Balmoral, and there's a piece of Ardmore in the background, which was given to her by President Zuma. One of the largest collections of Ardmore on public view is at the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts in South Florida, just south of Fort Lauderdale. And here's one of the artists, Christopher Nanchalin Chali, who's a nephew of Bonnie, uh, visiting the museum, and you can see how excited he was to be there surrounded by the creations of the studio and to see himself and his fellow artists acknowledged in this world, in this way. He and Faye, who visited just recently, said usually the artists have to wait till they're dead before they get represented in a museum collection, and so they're very proud of how um, the Ardmore is reaching people through these um, museum collections. So this is the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts in South Florida. Faye is shown here visiting the museum. She draws her inspiration from many sources, obviously the local animals and people. We've seen how that has inspired the art but also historic pieces. Um, the jug on the top right is a piece of French majolica ware uh, that Faye saw in a museum in Chicago, and she took the idea back with her to the artists and communicated that concept to them. And before you knew it, you started to see uh, zebra jugs coming out Ardmore style. But every piece is unique, and so each one has a flair and um, a sense of humor entirely of its own. The artists, as I mentioned, work in combination with each other. So this is a piece which has been sculpted by Alex and then hand-painted by Sia Bonga. And Sia has the most amazing style. He manages to get exactly the detailing of fur and feather with the minute brushes that you saw. So they create a wonderful collaboration to tell the story of Ardmore through their uh, talents that they have learned. Many of these people had rather routine occupations before they discovered their artistic talents. Often they were gardeners, they worked in the fields. So Ardmore has given them an opportunity to explore their creativity and then mentored by their fellows, they have risen to become the stars of the Ardmore studio. They 
get to see every now and again the animals. There's not elephants wandering around their studio, but they um, are sometimes sponsored to go on safari to enjoy the animals and watch them in the live so that they can bring the spirit of the animals into their work. And you'll see how lively and how humorous they tell the stories of their animal interaction in their work. The riders have certainly caught the imagination of many collectors. Uh, just the very almost absurd idea that elephants could be your vehicle of transport. Um, but it certainly is the case that in South Africa you can go on a safari on elephant back. And this was with a, a group of American collectors a few years ago uh, traveling on elephant back safari. The artists love their work at Ardmore. They talk about the wonderful opportunities that it has given them. They're called by the people in the community the easy gwelly, the fortunate ones, because they have an occupation which lives, allows them to fulfill their personal ambition, which could be anything from buying wonderful new clothes to buying a new car uh, to raising their children and helping to educate them. Interestingly, when you talk to the women, it's all about nurturing the family and educating the children. And the men are looking for the new cars um, and the opportunities to grow in the community professionally. Bennett Zondo, he's become the main expert for the travelers, um, which he models with great verve and flair. And each one looking slightly different. This monumental one is on display in the show at booth 409. It's very hard to ride a zebra, not impossible, but very hard. Over the years, many have tried, but typically their backs aren't strong enough to support a heavy human being. Uh, but you can see from the photographs from the 20s on the left um, that it has been possible to train them and domesticate them for riding. But the zebra stripes give the artist lots of challenges when they're painting them on the decorative objects. Beautiful pair of candlesticks here, which are certainly guaranteed to change the conversation for the best at any uh, dinner party. There are some quite unusual animals coming from the kilns of Ardmore also. These are the pangolins, or scaly anteaters. And surprisingly, these are the world's most trafficked animals illegally, because their scales um, are believed to have medicinal purposes in some cultures. And the pangolin, when threatened, just curls up into a little ball, and that's easily they then picked up and traded um, for its scales. So the Ardmore artists have portrayed the pangolin to draw attention to its fate. Turtles and tortoises, again, you might think it's unlikely that people would write these, but they have in the past. In Victorian times in England, children could go on tortoise rides. And here's a young lady in the 20s um, on a sea turtle. So the Ardmore artists, where we think they've entered the realms of fantasy, um, have really just been reflecting what actually did happen. It was once possible to ride on alligators in Florida and California. Um, these are real life photographs on the bottom left there. And the Ardmore artists have also had fun making crocodiles um, and alligators into their sculptural pieces. And the piece on the top left is actually a teapot in the form of an alligator or crocodile. Hippopotamus, um, again, one of the scariest animals to encounter in the wild, one of the most dangerous. Um, so if you ever come across a hippopotamus, you get well out of the way. They take more lives um, of local people than any other animal in South Africa. And it's hard to imagine that it's quite so scary when you see this rather whimsical teapot um, formed of a hippopotamus. 
He was inspired by William, the Egyptian hippopotamus in the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, these were used in um, the tombs of the kings in Egyptian times. And you can see on the top right a wood carving of a hippo from Zimbabwe. So these cultures have come together at Ardmore to create their own brand of hippopotamus sculpture. But teapots in an amusing form have a long tradition going back um, to the ancient Chinese. They were very popular in the 19th century in British Majolica. And now the Ardmore artists are giving the teapot a new twist um, with all of their interesting motifs and formats. For the exhibition that was held last year in the United States, from the savannah to the sea, the kingdom of the Zulus, they started to look at all the wonderful marine life in the tropical seas around Durban. So we start to see uh, fish and eels and squid and all sorts of extraordinary sea creatures being produced as Ardmore art. This amazingly intricately painted vase was decorated by Jabu Neni, one of the great talents at the studio today. And you'll be able to see this piece and inspect the painted detail in all of its minutiae at the Pasco Gallery. This is a magnificent piece. Slides can't do justice to the scale of these pieces, but this has been the showstopper here at Art Expo as people stop in their tracks to look more closely at this amazing whale design. Um, it's sculpted by an artist called Tobogo, who comes from Lesotho, and he's one of the youngest, newest talents at Ardmore, and then painted by Jabu Nen, one of the most sophisticated of the painters. One of the interesting directions that Ardmore has gone into in recent years is taking the wonderful creativity of the ceramic artists and taking their imagery into other media, particularly initially into soft furnishings and fabrics. And so about six years ago, they started to draw up designs which were used for um, fabrics uh, to make um, materials used for covering sofas and also for stools and also for handbags. Uh, ladies' handbags were created in the fabrics derived from the Ardmore ceramics. A new collection, the Zambezi collection, has just been launched with materials including silks and velvets um, that are now adorned with uh, motifs from the Ardmore animal kingdom. It started with a sofa, a limited edition sofa called the Kalakabusha New Beginning Sofa and it's expanded to include um, modern sofa pieces uh, which are also being produced in limited editions and are seeking awards at the furniture shows in Milan and other parts of Europe. An amazing discovery happened to Ardmore three years ago in 2013 when they showed at an exhibition in Paris and designers from Hermes, the luxury silk scarf manufacturers, saw their art and started to negotiate to purchase some designs to make into silk scarves. The scarf that you see on the screen is also the one I'm wearing here and a wonderful collaboration was born with the first scarves being launched last year and there will be a new scarf design coming out in the summer of 2017. So they work um, in collaboration with the Hermes designers. Uh, this is Faye's daughter Catherine Burning and one of the Ardmore artists working on the scarf that's going to be uh, coming out in June. They've been produced so far in three different patterns in many different colorways and they've been almost an instant sellout around the world wherever they have been shown. 
So not surprisingly, the Ardmore artists are very proud of this new direction uh, that their work has been taking them into. And it's giving the name of Ardmore such incredible recognition around the world. The most recent diversion for Ardmore is wallpapers made by the long-established English company Cole and & Son, and they launched in January of this year a spectacular collection of wallpaper designs uh, which pick up on the Ardmore motifs. We have a sample book um, at the exhibit at 409 if anybody wishes to peruse the papers. But there are great expectations now for the Ardmore designs on wallpaper um, coming out for the future. So it's been an amazing journey for Ardmore over the last 30 years, from the very humble beginnings in a small studio in the foothills of the Drakensberg Mountains, with Faye starting with her assistant Bonnie, to the global design empire that it is becoming today. Here's the latest view from South Africa taken a few weeks ago and when Ed Pasco at the Pasco Gallery was visiting and you see him surrounded by the Ardmore artists and very proudly showing off the works of art, many of which are coming and some of which have arrived here in the United States. So I hope you've enjoyed this journey with the Ardmore artists and that you'll take the time to swing by and see the exhibition that we have at booth 409. We have some cards at the front, it's available. And if you do become interested in the Ardmore story, there's an, a wonderful book, Ardmore We Are Because of Others, um, showing how the artists work in the spirit of Ubuntu. Thank you.